So how do we figure out end behavior? Well, end behavior is just what happens at the very end of a function. So what, we're, what is at the end of the function? Well, if functions extend out indefinitely, whatever, this, this could do doing a lot of different things, right? But if it extends out indefinitely, then what I'm concerned with is when the x behavior is negative infinity or when the x behavior is infinity, okay? Well, turns out, if you have a polynomial, I'm not saying that the one I drew, I wrote out is going to be this, but if we have a polynomial like 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus x plus 1, if you have something like this, you don't really care about this portion here for very large values of x, okay? So remember, when we say infinity, we mean a ginormous number, right? Um, so for very big values, because of this x cubed effect, x cubed grows way, 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 way faster than all of the rest of this function, okay? So what I'm saying is, this part here becomes negligible. In other words, it doesn't matter. So all I need to do is find the leading term, okay? So all I need to do here is find this leading term. So let's see here, I'm gonna erase this. Go away, go away, go away, go away. All right, so actually I'm gonna even erase this. Let's see, can I erase it? Yes, okay, cool beans. All right, so what we need to do is we need to find the leading term. Now, I don't wanna multiply all of this out. All I need to do is figure out what the leading terms are in each of these polynomials that are in parentheses. So even though 8x cubed is not in parentheses technically, think of it as in. Okay? So we know that we have 8x cubed. Okay? Here we know we have negative x. Okay? The negative does matter here. And in here we have 7x raised to the fourth. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply all of these together because the product of this will be the leading coefficient or the leading term. Okay, so this is going to end up giving me if I multiply this out. Um, I'm going to here I'm going to get seven to the fourth, which I'm actually going to leave at seven to the fourth. Here I have negative one, and here I have eight. So this is going to be negative eight times seven to the fourth x cubed times x times x to the fourth. And I'm going to go ahead and add these exponents because that's what you do when you multiply numbers that have the same base. And this gives me, uh, let's see, I'm going to do it in purple. This is going to give me x to the eighth. This piece here, all I really care is that it's a negative number. I don't need to multiply out uh, negative 8 times 7 to the fourth. Um, if you're curious, 7 to the 4th is going to be 2401. So if I multiply that by 8, 2401 is going to give you this huge number, negative 19208 x to the 8th. All I care about is that this is a big negative number. I know that's kind of a, not an accurate statement because negative numbers are not technically big, but whatever. Okay. Um, so it's going to be what you really only care about is the fact that this is actually negative. That's really the point. Why? Because if I have a negative number in front and then the exponent is 8, what happens when I pick very big values of x? So in other words, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x, which is y, what happens to y? Well, if you plug in a negative number here and you raise it to the 8, it's going to come out as a positive because all of your values are going to be Paired. In other words, I'll write this out. Uh, you're going to have a negative number, and this repeats itself eight times, right? Oops. Please hold while I make my tic tac toe signs. Well, if you're right, if you're pairing these, right? they're always going to come out as every single one of these are going to be positives. And if you multiply a bunch of positive things together, it comes out as a positive, and that's your answer. So that that's always going to happen because of the pairing effect if it's an even. So this is going this part here is going to come out as a positive, but you're multiplying by a negative, so you get negative infinity. And you repeat the same process 
with when it's positive. So the similar effect is going to occur, right? Because essentially all I did is I made all of these positive, but that doesn't matter because it's going to still come out as positive at the end of the day, which means it's going to be positive, and then I'm going to multiply it by, by the negative here, right? And so it's going to come out as the same value, okay? Even functions do that, right? So if the leading coefficient is even, it's either going to be both of them at the end of the day come out negative, or both of them at the end of the day come out positive, okay? So again, what this is saying is that for this particular function here, for this particular function, for extreme values, x is going to come out as, when x is negative, y will come out as negative, and when x is positive, y will come out as positive. Another way of looking at this too, though, is if you graph it here, you can see that these values, this is at the extreme point, it's going down. And this illustrates this effect right here. Okay, so what we're trying to do always again is figure out what happens here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. See you in the next video.